Hi there and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the menstrual cup. That's right, we are getting TMI about periods and talking about the menstrual cup. Periods are just a normal part of life, so why not talk about it and discuss different options that you have when it comes to your period? So before we get started, if you're like me, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you get menstrual cramps. So what I actually use is Easy Ache. This is a cramp bark formula along with some other herbs that is designed to help ease the ache and help those menstrual cramps when you're on your period. And guess what? Today, June 28th, the one ounce version of this is on sale for $5 today only. So grab it now. If you guys want to try this out and get rid of your cramps, then check out the link in the description box. Don't worry if it's past the 28th and you're watching this video, I'll have a coupon code down below. You guys can save 10% off your first order. Otherwise, grab that one ounce bottle. They have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, you can just contact them and you get your money back. $5, can't go wrong with that. This stuff really helps. I take it a couple times throughout the day when I'm on my period. You can even take it a couple days leading up to your period and it'll help um, even more and so I just love this stuff so if you're struggling with cramps like I usually do check this stuff out so it's in the description box check out that link okay now let's get back to talking about the menstrual cup so this here is the schoon cup I've had this for I think around almost five years now and I would not have it any other way I will not go back to pads tampons I don't like any of that the cup is where it's at I love it. Let me tell you why. So this one here is more of a bell shaped. I know a lot of people are more familiar with the Diva Cup. It's kind of more of like a cone shape, I guess. And it's a little bit stiffer silicone. This here is a lot softer and it's more of a bell shape. And I love this because I have endometriosis. And so I was really nervous about having a cup in there just with how bad my endometriosis is. And this, um, it doesn't really bother me at all. So I like the softer cup. Another one that I really wanna try is the salt cup. They also have a softer silicone and I don't really need more than one cup. So I don't need to try it. I just wanna try it because I just love my cup so much. So why the menstrual cup? Why not pads? Why not tampons? Well, there's a whole variety of reasons. There's chemicals in pads and tampons that I'm just not comfortable with. And I just really don't like to feel myself bleed. TMI, but you know that feeling when you're on your period and you sneeze or you stand up and you're like, oh boy, I gotta get to the bathroom. You don't feel that at all with the cup. You don't feel yourself bleed. The cup catches it at all. You don't feel anything coming out. Honestly, I forget that I'm on my period when I'm wearing my cup. Sometimes I go a little too long without changing it and I leak because I forget I'm on my period and I feel myself leak and I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta go empty my cup. But that's not, it doesn't happen all the time. But I honestly do forget that I'm on my period. The second reason that I really like it is there's no smell. Okay. Now TMI, we're getting all TMI here, so I warned you already. I have actually stuck my nose in the cup to smell and see if there's that period smell and shocking, there's no smell. Why is that? Well, I've heard, and I've also found this to be true, that it's the reaction from your period and the chemicals in pads. Now, I've used pads twice in the last five years. Once was after I had my surgery four years ago. I didn't want to deal with the cup and stuff. And then also after I had Faith, my postpartum bleeding for those first six weeks, I wore a pad. You don't want anything to go up inside um, for those first six weeks. So I did not use my cup. And let me tell you, I hate pads. Oh, I just hate them. They smell. They just, I just don't like them. So there's no smell with the cup, but there is with pads. So it's kind of weird, but it's true. The third reason that I like wearing a cup is when you wear a pad, you just feel it down there. You're hot and sweaty, especially in the summer. It's just annoying and I just hate being hot and sweaty. And so with the cup, there's none of that. Now I do wear a cloth liner as backup just in case I forget to change it or something. And then that way I'm not leaking everywhere. Or sometimes when you do change it and you put it back in, there's just like a little bit of blood on the outside left over that might just drip a little bit on your underwear. So I like to wear a cloth pad as backup and um, you just, you, you don't get all hot and sweaty down there with this. So that's why I love this over the pad. It did take me a little bit of time to get used to putting this in. There's a couple different folds that you can practice and try. One of them is, I think it's called the C fold. So you just kind of push it in and curve it around and make it into like a C shape. And then you can insert it in. And once it's inside, you kind of twist it around and allow it to pop open. And that way you can get a good seal up over your cervix. I started out with that fold. It was a little tricky for me. So the one I like the best, I'm not sure what it's called, but you just kind of push it down like this 
and then it kind of makes it a little bit pointier so it's a little bit easier to get inside and then once you do get it inside you can twist it and it's really easy for it to pop open now i can reach my cervix with my middle finger and so when you put it in you want to make sure that it's up over your cervix because if it's not then you can leak i have put it in before and i didn't realize that my cervix was on the outside of the cup and then that's when you leak obviously <laughs> so you want to make sure that you have a good seal in there and it takes practice it takes time i find that it's easiest to either just put it on when i'm sitting over the toilet or you could put one leg up like on the bathtub and just kind of squat down a little bit and put it in it takes a little bit of practice but once you get it down you're good all right let's talk changing the cup how often should you change it so for me on my first two days of my period i'm usually out of commission I bleed super, super heavy. I can fill this up and overflow it in about an hour and a half to two hours. And this is kind of relatively new since having faith. I've had super heavy periods towards the, you know, the first couple days. And so I have to just empty it quite often. I don't plan to go anywhere because I'm just, I don't feel like going anywhere anyways. And so I just stay home and I just empty my cup each time I go to the bathroom. Or if I just feel like, oh, I really need to go empty my cup, then I go ahead and empty it. And I notice that I start cramping a little bit more when my cup is really full, kind of weird. But once I start getting some cramps, I'm like, oh, I need, I should go empty my cup. I go empty it, cramps go away, especially you know, easy ache really helps with the initial cramps. And then I could tell when this is getting full cause I just start cramping a little bit more. And so I just empty it. Um, and then usually by day, the end of day two, day three, I usually only start emptying it twice a day. Now you don't want to leave it in for more than 12 hours at a time. So I usually take it out, wash it, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then right before I go to bed, um, I'll take it out, wash it, put it back in, and then I'll go to bed. And then the next morning I usually take care of it in the shower, empty it, clean it, put it back in, and then I'm good for the whole day. Usually by day four, I don't have to wear it at night. I just wear it during the day. And then usually by day five or six, I'm done with my period. And I just wear a cloth liner that last day, just cause you know, there's really nothing that much to catch. And that is my period. TMI. Let's talk about how we wash this. Now you don't want to use any soaps that contain any fragrance. A lot of them are too harsh and will break down your silicone. And besides it's going up inside of you. You want to be careful what you're putting up inside of you. So you definitely want to stick away from any artificial fragrance or any fragrance. So I have some salt cup wash. I love this stuff. And this is very gentle on your body and it's also gentle on your cup. It's pH balance. So it's safe to use down there. Um, some people even use it as like a feminine wash if you want to do that. So I love keeping this in the shower um, each morning when I take it out. I love changing my cup in the shower because if I get it in wrong or something, I can just stick it back in and, you know, wash up and get it all cleaned up and everything. And then I'm ready to go for the day. So I just use this scrub it really good with my salt cup wash. And then throughout the day, if I have to go to the bathroom, when I empty it, I just take it out, dump it in the toilet waddle over to the sink, rinse it out really quick. Um, I do have some unscented soap in the sink. And so if I do, or I'll use this if, but I usually keep this in the shower. Um, if I do feel like I need to use a little bit of soap, I use some of my unscented soap that's by the sink. Otherwise I'll just rinse it out with water and then waddle back over to the toilet, put it back in and then come and wash my hands. Now, if you're like concerned about while well, you're dumping it, you know, well, you dump it in the toilet, but then you're washing it in the sink, isn't that gonna get the sink all dirty? I have my own bathroom sink, so I usually do it there and I don't really worry about it, but I do have a disinfectant spray. So if you are using like a shared bathroom or something, you can definitely, you know, spray it all out and disinfect the sink if that bothers you or if it would bother anybody else. But I have my own sink. It doesn't really bother me. So I just make sure I rinse it all down and wash my hands with soap and it gets all cleaned anyways. So then when I'm done with my cycle, I wash it really good with the cup wash. And then I will take some hydrogen peroxide in a spray bottle and I'll squirt it really good, get it all nice and saturated, let it sit till it dries. And then I'll go ahead and put it in my little satchel until my next period. Once I start my period, I pull it out, scrub it with my cup wash, and I'm good to go. Now I will boil this um, every couple cycles just you know to make sure it's nice and sanitized. I used to do it at the end of every single cycle, but you gotta let it boil for 10 minutes and that is a lot to do. Some people boil it after every cycle and then once they start their period again, they boil it and then they go to use it. If you wanna do that, that's totally fine, but I just find that spraying it with the peroxide, scrubbing it with the cup wash keeps it nice and clean. Well, that's it. All I have for you guys today about the menstrual cup. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Don't forget to grab your one ounce bottle of Ease the Ache for only $5 today. Click on that link in the description box. Let me know if you use a menstrual cup or pads or tampons. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.